important to hydrate. Hi everybody, it's me, Bella. I don't know if I've really made mention of it on this channel before. I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am somebody who watched something called General Conference this weekend. I'm gonna kind of gear this uh, video towards members of the church, people who will kind of understand. I am more than happy to answer some questions for clarification if you guys wanna ask any questions in the comments or send me a message. I'll provide a little bit of information up front here. I am an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I have been since birth. I served a full-time volunteer mission for the church. I served in the islands of French Polynesia. I loved it. That numbered among the best years of my life. I cared so much about the mission of the gospel and the church that I came back and I applied for a job as a teacher at the Missionary Training Center in Provo, Utah while I was going to school there. The church has provided me with an access to Christ's gospel that is indispensable and it is something that I care about so much. Something else about me is that I am LGBTQ. I am at least bisexual. I am attracted to women. This is something that I have known about myself since I was 14 years old. I like guys too. Insert uh, Road to El Dorado meme here. It's interesting to be kind of trapped in the middle of the Venn diagram of somebody who is queer and somebody who is uh, part of a religious organization that tends to create sort of ostracizing sentiment towards queer individuals or couples or relationships. Um, every session of General Conference has been, since I was a teenager, um, a little disappointing just in the regard of there are two things that I am always in the back of my mind expecting to happen or be announced. The first one is that gay marriage will become part of the mainstream church. And the second one is that women will be ordained to the priesthood in the same capacity that men are. And I just want to unpack some of the things that I felt this weekend in connection with those two topics. I actually believe that people are given church callings contingent to the fact that leaders are praying about who to give a leadership calling to and actually receiving revelation about that. That being said, I think there are a lot of different ways to approach receiving revelation from the Lord. I don't profess to know what kinds of things church leadership is doing in regards to diversity and representation within higher church leadership, but God is a God who is happy to workshop things. I really love the story in uh, Ether chapter two, where the brother of Jared doesn't know what to do to get his family across the sea and how to keep the boats from getting flooded and how to get light into the boats once they're all plugged up. When he comes to the Lord and says, I don't know what to do about this, the Lord says, well, what do you want to do? But the brother of Jared comes up with this kind of wacky out of left field idea to make some glass rocks and have God turn them into lights. God seems like the kind of God who is happy to workshop things with his children pertaining to revelation. And I believe that that can happen on a global and a church organizational scale. It's one of the reasons that I decided to do this video is because on the off chance that this video gets seen by anybody, at least it's like I will have said something because I think that that's something that can happen in any organization, even one that is led by God, is that if people don't talk about things that they think are off, then things will just kind of continue as they are because God does not operate in a vacuum and the church definitely doesn't operate in a vacuum. There's a reason that it's a bunch of people that are all thrown in a pot together. And I think that one of those reasons is that we're supposed to be able to ask questions and speak up about things that we think can be made better, that can work better for the children of God and for people to be able to come closer to Jesus and feel helped and heard and seen. As it stands, I was talking to my mom about this and the projected statistic for active members of the church right now is that two thirds of them are women. If you just watch General Conference, the leadership that's represented is so, so small on the female side. It is a real bummer for me as a woman to watch conference and only have two or three speakers be women out of the 10 hours 
of general conference content that comes out over the weekend. It's just, it's weird to look at the sea of faces and not have it actually represent what our church looks like. Just have some of those visible church leadership roles be filled by women. And whether or not that looks like women being ordained to the priesthood in the same capacity as the men, or whether it doesn't, I would just like to see the numbers be a little bit more equal. I think it's really hard for young people to learn how to respect female church leadership when the only organizations that they can look to are the three that are the General Relief Society Presidency, the Auxiliaries of the General Primary Presidency and the Young Women Presidency. And the fact that those women are rotated out really quickly makes it really difficult, I think, for people to remember them or recognize who they are. It is really, really difficult to find a church member, male or female, that can really readily remember all of the female faces in church leadership from the past couple of years. I love the church. I think there are a lot of really great opportunities in the church for women. I do also think that the church as a whole has problems with sexism. There were a lot of moments during this general conference that I felt very close to Jesus Christ. I also believe that it is possible to have painful experiences while watching something that should spiritually uplift you. There was a lot of emphasis on the concept of exaltation through being heterosexually married in the temple with a family. That is something that I don't have right now. It could be for a number of reasons. It might be the LGBTQ thing. It might be because I just can't figure this dating thing out, man. It's a jungle out here. It's a jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. There are a lot of people around the world who are single forever who have children who have left the church and um, do not fit into the box of the family unit. The two messages that were really hard to listen to in regards to this topic were the ones from President Oaks and the one from President Nelson. I really love and believe in President Nelson as a prophet. It's like he can amplify those messages from God to come to us because he is a servant of the Lord. The way he speaks is kind and it's gentle and it's interesting and, and very hopeful. He's the first major church leader that I remember saying the acronym LGBTQ over a pulpit. He said it in a devotional at BYU while I was attending school there. So the way that his talk felt was definitely a little bit of a shock to me. I don't know what I want to do with that information other than to put this message on the internet to let people know that I... I don't even really know what much I have to say about it except for that I'm sad.